This is Lesson 90, VHDL Example 60. In this example, we'll write a VHDL program to implement the state machine for the sequence detector that we derived in the last lesson. Here was the block diagram we had for a Mealy machine. To implement this in VHDL, you'll write a process for C1, in which the sensitivity list will contain the present state and the input X. You'll also have a separate process for the state register in which the inputs are clock. I call it a knit here, usually we call it clear. And then there'll be a third process for C2 in which the sensitivity list contains the present state and the input X. For a more machine, the only difference is that C2 will have a process in which the sensitivity list contains only the present state because remember a more machine the output depends only on the present state. Here was the finite state machine diagram we had for our sequence detector where we wanted to detect the sequence 1101. Here was the state machine that we derived in the last lesson for this problem. So let's see how we can implement this state machine in VHDL. The input will be clock, clear, D in, and the output will be D out, all of type standard logic. So the first thing we do is we have to define our states. We do that with a type statement in the architecture. We call it state type is, and we'll list them S0, S1, S2, S3, S4. So in this example, we'll just call them S0, S1, S2, S3, S4, instead of 0, and then we had S1, and 1, 1, and 1, 1, 0, and 1, 1, 0, 1. 1, 0, 1. So we'll make it easier by just labeling them S0, 1, 2, 3, 4. Then we'll define two signals, the present state and the next state, as type state type. So these state types will just be these enumerated types S0, 1, 2, 3, and 4. So we don't have to worry about how these are implemented, whether they're binary or, or one hot. So the present state and the next state will be of this type, state type. Then we'll have a separate process for these state registers. The inputs will be clock and clear. If clear equals 1, the present state gets assigned S0, else on the rising edge of the clock, present state just gets next state. So that's all there is to it. This is the only sequential part of this whole state machine. We'll then write a process for C1 in which we implement the state machine depending only on the present state and D in. And we just make a big case statement, case present state. So if your state is S0, then if Dn is 1, we want to go to state S1, so the next state becomes S1, else the next state stays S0. When you're in S1, over here, if Dn is 1, we're going to go to state S2, we're going to call this S2 now, else the next state is uh, S0. You go back to S0. If you're in state S2, this one, then if Dn is 0, you're going to go to S3, so the next state is S3, else you're going to stay in S2 here. When S3, when you're in S3 here, if Dn is 1, you're going to go to S4, we're calling this S4 now, else you go back to S0. And when you're in S4, if Dn is 0, you go here back to S0, else the next state is S2, you go back to S2. And then of course we always need a when others in our case statement. We'll just put a null here, when others null. So this is a case statement which just implements this state diagram. Finally, we need a separate process for C2 to get the output. Since this is a more machine, it depends only on the present state. So process present state, if the present state is S4, then D out is 1, we found the sequence 1101, 1, 
else d out is zero. So that's the entire BHDL program for implementing the state machine. Let's uh, look at the simulation and we see that it works. Here is d in. We chug along here. Now on the rising edge of the clock we have a 1, 1, 0, 1, at which point d out goes to 1, and then we have a 1 overlapped, 1, 0, 1, and it goes, output goes to 1 again. Notice that the present state and the next state in the simulation are just labeled with the names of the states S0, S1, S2, S3, S4. Now, it turns out we can also implement that uh, sequence detector using a, me a melee state machine. Let's see how we do it. Remember, in a melee machine, the present output depends not only on the present state, but also the present input. So we could make a state diagram for this, similar to what we did for the Moore machine. And if you look at it, it looks like we might be able to get away with only four st uh, states instead of five. If you start at S0, now remember, the output depends on the present state and the present input. So we can't put the output in the state uh, circle like we did for the Moore machine. So what we do is if the input is 1, we go to here and we put a slash and we indicate what the output is. So if the input is 0, we stay here and the output is 0. If we go to state S1, that means we've seen a 1, then the output will be 0. If we get another 1, the output is still 0, so we've seen a 1, 1, and then if we stay in 1, 1, 1, the output is still 0. Then if we see a 0, then we've seen a 1, 1, 0, the output is still 0. But now if we get a 1 input, well, we go back to state S1 like we did before, except now the output is 1. That means we've seen it. The output is 1. But we have a potential problem here, because look, as soon as we get to state 1, the input can be either 0, in which case we go back to here and the output is 1, or we go to state S2 and the output is 1. So if we're in state S1, the output is always going to show up as 0, because remember the output depends not only on the current state, but also on the input. Which means that if we detected the sequence 1, 1, 0, 1, we get a 1 on the way to state 1, but as soon as we get here it immediately goes back to 0. So we really can't tell if we've detected the signal the sequence 1, 1, 0, 1. So what we need to do, we need to somehow latch this 1 into an output register in what used to be that combinational module C2. So this one really needs to be uh, a sequential circuit now which will latch it. So let's look at how we, how we can make a melee machine. We have clock clear D in and D out. The state registers are implemented the same way. We now only have four states, S0, S1, S2, S3. We have present state and next state. This is all the same as we had for the Moore machine. And we implement this in a very similar way with a big case statement on present state. If S0 is 0, then if Dn is 1, we go to S1, else we stay in S0. If you're in S1 and it's 1, we go to S2, otherwise we go to S0. If you're in S2, if the input is 0, we go to S3, else we stay in S2. And then if you're in S3, if Dn is 1, we go back to S1, otherwise we go all the way back to S0. So that's basically the same as the Moore machine. What's different now, we have to make this a sequential circuit in order to latch this 1 in. So here, instead of present state, we need to make the clock and clear input. If clear is 1, D out is 0. Else on the rising edge of the clock, if the present state is S3 and D in is 1, then we want the output D out to be 1. And this is going to latch it in because we got a rising edge of the clock here. Else D out is 0. So this should work at the cost of an extra flip-flop. So we really didn't save a flip-flop. We saved one in the state machine but we had to add it in the output in order to keep the one of the output. So we can check the simulation for the melee machine. Here's the input, 1, 1, 0, 1, and the output is 
1. We have 1, 1, 0, 1, and the output's 1 again. And these show the next state and the present state. You notice there are only four states here instead of five, as there were in the Moore machine. Let's make a top-level design uh, in which we use our clock div, our clock pulse, and a sequence detector here. And we're going to use the same trick that we used for the uh, shift registers back in Lesson 86. We have button 0 and button 1 going through this OR gate. So when you press button 0, you'll get a clock pulse, but you'll have 0 coming in here. And when you press button 1, you'll also get a clock pulse, but you'll have a 1 going in DN. So to test our sequence, you could press button 1, 1, 0, 1, and then the output LD0 should light up for the sequence. So you type in the sequence just by pressing button 0 and button 1. So M clock will be the input. We'll have button and LDs in the usual way. And we'll have the component for clock div. We uh, will use the 190 for, the, uh, for our clock uh, our clock pulse, and we have the sequence detector, and then we'll have the clock pulse, and then we have the signals clear, clock 190, clock pulse, button 01, and button 01 is button 0 or button 1, and then you just port map clock div in the usual way, clock pulse in the usual way, and the sequence detector, clock goes to clock pulse, clear to clear, D in to button 1, D out to LD0. So you should uh, uh, download this uh, bit file into your uh, FPGA and test it out. And when you press button 1, 1, 0, 1, then LD0 should come on. So download that and try it out.